Hi everybody, welcome to JCCC Voices. I'm Emily Bierman. In March 2008, Terry Calloway, president of Johnson County Community College, signed the American College and University President's Climate Commitment, in which he agreed that the college would develop a comprehensive plan to achieve climate neutrality as a campus. Signing the commitment symbolized JCCC's pledge to environmental sustainability on campus and in the community. JCCC is now moving toward a zero waste policy that could save the college over half a million dollars in 10 years by increasing recycling rates and eliminating waste at its source. Overseeing this effort is Michael Ray, the college's sustainability project manager. Welcome, Michael. Thank you. Thanks for being with us today. So we're talking about the zero waste concept. Explain what that is for yeah. us. Uh, zero waste concept is not anything new necessarily, but it's something that the college is trying to embrace. A lot of other cities and other institutions and other schools have also went down this lane. And so what it is, it's a way to basically reduce the amount of waste that we have on campus, uh, whether that's through recycling, reducing, reusing, but then there's a couple of other R's that we will add to that as well. Um, so it's actually a 90% waste diversion, and what we want to do is we want to reach that goal and the way to do that is to change a lot of our behaviors. So okay. that's really the, the main thing. But the, but the main concept is just to make less waste. Well, so 90%. Yeah. Why 90? Why not 100%? Well, 100% is kind of hard, obviously, if you think <laughs> about it. I mean, there are things we know that are going to need to be discarded into the landfill. It's just the way it is. Um, but we also have, uh, there's studies that show that 90% of um, people's waste is something that can be recycled, reduced, reused. Um, so based on that, that's kind of where the 90% comes from. Okay. Yeah. All right. So you've done studies around the campus that kind of have shown what needs to be done to make this happen. So what is zero waste at JCCC going to look like? Can you give us some examples of that? Yeah. The the first step really is what we've been doing since 1994, and that's recycling. So we've been doing a lot of recycling on campus. We've changed the way we recycle. We recycle now a lot more products. Um, so we recycle anything from e-waste to the normal stuff, which is really the paper, the cardboard, and the cans, and the plastic, which we've, we've always done, but now we're doing all that together, and then we've added a lot more. So whether it's e-waste, styrofoam, um, general construction debris, things of that nature. So there's a lot more of that kind of things being recycled. Okay. Um, some of the other things, like I mentioned, are the other R's. So there's reduce, reuse, and then we add another couple that's refuse and return. So if you look at it, um, we do a lot of reduction. So re reducing is one of the most important things we can do as well. And that's to just reduce things like printing, printing things. I mean, we just print less. We do a lot of that now. Um, or printing on both sides of a piece of paper instead of one side, is exactly. that the same sort of thing? Yeah, and I think a lot of people do that mainly just because it's a little more convenient. Uh, you don't have a major stack of paper to carry around. But, uh, so then there's um, reuse, so we want to reuse things. Um, people are really used to the idea, you know, you're reusing your cup. Mm -hmm. um, people are reusing their grocery bags, they take grocery bags with them to right. the store and reuse those kind of things. But then on campus we do a lot of reuse too. And we have a surplus exchange store on campus now in which staff and faculty can take in um, anything that they have in their office and then bring it to a central location. And then if other people need that, they can go to the same store and pick up things and kind of shop and, and kind of... That's well, we've used that. We have, you know, if you have a three-ring binder you're not going to use anymore, you can take it to the surplus and trade it for, you know, file folders yeah. or something else that you need. So that's been a really great idea. Yeah, and so, so often I take people in there and all of a sudden they're just like, oh wow, I just ordered that from Office Max. Mm -hmm. I could have just came here and got it. And so it's a really great thing for the, for the campus to be able to use. Um, so that's really, that's reduce and reuse. But then there's refuse. So we often don't think of what that means. What does refuse mean? But refuse means basically um, not buying items that, that you don't really need, but then also buying items for safety. So if, don't buy hazardous chemicals. Don't buy any, you know, sort of the green cleaning options. Mm -hmm. So that's really what refuse tends to mean. Okay. Um, it also saves money by doing that because then we save the Earth's resources and um, basically allows us to buy things that are gonna last a long time. That's really important, you know, and to buy locally. 
So those are some of the refuses. Um, then the last one would be just to return. And return is really, it's not necessarily, oh, I bought a pair of jeans and I'm gonna go ahead and return them after a month. Now, <laughs> what we wanna do is return means making the vendors and the producers of these products more responsible for them. So if they make something that can't be recycled, they need to figure out a way to make their products so that when they do reach the end of the life, they need to have a place to go when they're done or another use form at the end of it. So that really that could mean literally returning it to the manufacturer or the yeah. vendor that you bought it from. Yeah, exactly. So my, you know, talking about genes, well, okay, maybe at the end of that useful life, the genes could be then sent back and then at some point turned into insulation for your home. Mm -hmm. So those are those are sort of the kind of options that you have when it comes to returning. Okay. Yeah. Well, we're here on campus and we have a great, you know, dining area for our students and there's tons of food that goes through there every day. Talk to us about composting because yeah. I think that's been a part of what you've been doing as well. Yeah. Um, the campus has moved to composting. Actually, we did that last year. So that's when we began the whole process of composting. And it's, it's really taken off well because it's a big team effort that we've got. And what we found is that uh, 90, really the reason we're doing it is because 95% of food waste actually goes to the landfill right now. 95%? Yeah. That's a lot. Yeah, and there's a lot of food waste in the world. Mm -hmm. So when you look at it, that's the worst place to put it because most people think that food waste, when it goes to the landfill, just biodegrades and goes away and becomes something great, which it doesn't, actually just gets buried. And as, after it gets buried, it stays there. It doesn't decompose. Really? Yeah. It basically tends to be in, uh, in a state where it can't get any oxygen anymore, so it can't break down. Most people don't realize that. I mean, just because we typically think you throw something away and it just goes away. Mm -hmm. um, but we've kind of realized that the best thing we can do is compost all of our food. And we've actually composted up till now, which has been about a um, month and a half, well, about a year and two months we've composted nearly uh, 33 tons of food. So, wow, that's a lot. Yeah, and 33 tons of food tends to be a lot of food because that's about 1,300 pounds a week. And uh, what we've done is actually taken that compost that we've created from the food and some sawdust, and now that goes back into our campus farm as a fertilizer. So it's, it's really a win-win situation. Wow, so that's actually helping the students that work on their farm fertilize what they're growing and then those things come back sometimes to those of us here on campus. Exactly. And we can buy the food that they grow. So, so yeah, that's a really wonderful circle yeah, that you've yeah. made. It's a great loop. Yeah. Well, so talk to us about the most difficult part of zero waste. What aren't we doing? Is there Well, um, yeah, there's zero waste is tough. And that's why the goal isn't going to be in three years to get to 90%. It's actually going to be more like 2025 or something. And that's a lot a lot of institutions have done is they've really set forth a plan to make that happen. Mm -hmm. And like I said, recycling is the first aspect of that. And really the last ex aspect of this is just returning stuff. And that's dealing with vendors. And so, you know, we need to, as, a, as an institution, model what this is going to look like. Because we need to work with other companies, we need to work with local companies to source things that are locally, but then also just basically say to people, we want a different way of doing business. And that's what we call green purchasing. And so that's that's one of the bigger aspects of, and the more difficult aspects of making this happen. Mm -hmm. um, and we can all always do better with everything else, whether it's reusing and reducing as well. Mm -hmm. so. so really it's on the individual basis for those of us who eat in our food court or work in the offices here, yes. but it's, it really extends all the way to our purchasing process and yes. to our waste collection process and all of those things yeah. together. Yeah, okay. and behavior change is, you know, the other big aspect of it as well. I mean, we can do a lot of this stuff, but then people need to just change certain behaviors. Well, let's go on to saving money yeah. with zero waste. How does it save the college money to do this? Well, the, the biggest aspect to save the money right up front is, is the amount of money we, we actually get from the recycling. So we get, we get a certain amount of money for recycling. Um, this year we're looking to probably make about $15,000 in revenue. And since we started in 1994, we've actually made about $65,000. Mm -hmm. Now where does that money go? That all goes to the student scholarship funds. So um, the foundation handles that and it's, a, it's just a great way to promote recycling in a way because people realize that if the money is going to go to something good, 
then there's this extra effort to, to you know, recycle more. Mm -hmm. And that's really what we want is recycling more. Um, the, the other big hidden aspect of recycling and revenue and, and just revenue in general for zero waste is the fact that um, most people don't think about the other end of where that recycling would have went, which is to the landfill. And it costs money to send things to the landfill, mm -hmm. which most people don't think about. So yeah, if you drive average, a truck up to the landfill, they're going to charge you a fee, yeah. which I don't think people do understand. Right. But that's because why we pay for trash collection is yeah. because they have to be charged. Yeah. yeah, It's just picked up and it goes away. And um, on average, our, our recycling or our waste bill is, is about $70 a ton. So right there, for every ton, which is in the last year, the, every, we've recycled 150 tons. Of material, so again, that's 150 times 70 that we don't have to pay to go to landfill. Mm -hmm. And again, it's the right thing to do; is just to, to keep it out of the landfill. So then, there's a lot of other um, monetary efficiencies that can be made by doing zero waste, which is just process improvement. Once you go through the zero waste process, you find a lot of process improvements. So there's, there's a huge amount of efficiencies there as well. Okay. Now, I understand um, that the college saves money over years. Yeah. Um, you know, the whole zero waste plan, though, uh, we, you know, talking about recycling and, and savings that's made there, but from the zero waste plan, if, if we can reduce our shipments or basically our pickups that go to the landfill all the way down to 10%, then it's a, it's a huge savings. Um, we've kind of calculated it over the next 10 years. and. That's only making it, that's not even making it to a complete 10%. If we go to 60%, we're still going to make, we're basically going to save $500,000 over the next 10 years. And that's a big chunk of change, yeah. right? Yeah. Now imagine if we get to zero waste, that's just 60%. Mm -hmm. If we get to zero, we're not sending anything away. I mean, just a huge amount of savings that we're going to have from that. So. That's great. Well, what are other schools or companies? Um, doing to implement zero waste? Are there other things that they're doing that you use as kind of a model or a benchmark for us? Yeah, um, that's the nice thing about colleges. We have an extensive network called ACI that we are able to kind of tap into and have discussions with people about. And so um, the, the most information that I get tends to come from ACI and some other uh, conferences that I've been to. And zero waste is really being implemented by about 50 or 200 other institutions, and the last I heard it was 50, and I'm just assuming it's doubled that by now because mm -hmm. of the popularity of it. Um, in doing that, what's, what uh, other folks have done, we've, we've obviously pulled from, and most of the initiatives that sort of come up and that are new to the college right now are pulled from those. Um, but a lot of them are really attacking it from the green purchasing policies as well, because they know that's really the biggest aspect of zero waste. Um, communities have done it, um, so like the, for instance Denver, uh, actually Boulder, Colorado has done it. And so as a city they, they've created a great amount of savings, but then there's also countries that have done it. New Zealand was one of the first to actually implement a zero waste policy and they're reaching it. Uh, so from a city they're, they're getting great savings, but then there's also companies um, like Xerox and, and Interface Flooring. All of these companies have saved millions of dollars just by, first of all, saying we're going to go zero waste. But then in doing that, they find that they get all these other efficiencies out of doing it. So whether it's human efficiencies or resource efficiencies, there's just a major amount of savings that have been made from these companies. So the investment in zero waste actually leads to a greater return than maybe was expected in the beginning. Yeah. So that's yeah, pretty cool. Absolutely. Well, companies are one thing, corporations and, and countries are a big deal, but what can each of us do at home to help this process in our communities and then on campus? Well, you know, one of the things is that I did was just get this book here. Basically, it's Eco-Friendly Families. There's tons of books out there, just how to be green at home. Um, they're going to be, they're going to tell you all kinds of ways that you can change things. But as we kind of talked about, you know, you take a, take your cup, you can take your reusable cup to the stores, you know, and, and you use that instead of just getting a brand new cup. Right then and there, you, you're keeping something out of the trash. But then there's the whole, you know, using, reusing your bags. Um, there's a lot of other things that you can do. Mm -hmm. um, basically, uh, we, you can reuse uh, reusable, rechargeable batteries. 
batteries are some of the biggest things that we tend to go through really quickly. So if, if you have the opportunity to use a rechargeable battery, that's good. Mm -hmm. um, another aspect is to pre-cycle. So pre-cycling, when you go shopping, mm -hmm. look for something that's made from a recycled material, whether it's the packaging or the actual product. Um, you know, try not to buy products that would otherwise have these huge bubble packs. Those are the worst when you buy something that's you know this small and you get a huge bubble pack. Those kind of things. You know. Or take there's several layers sometimes of packaging just to get to the thing that you bought. And I yeah. always, as I'm unwrapping it, I'm thinking, wow, there's a lot of resources here that probably need to go and be recycled. Yeah, and there's alternatives to that. And, and the other thing is to get involved and try and tell people or tell the, you know, write the manufacturer and say, you know, why are we creating such much, so much waste for something? You know, the other thing is, is to buy in bulk. So if you can buy certain things in bulk, that, you know, that has less packaging, do that as well. Mm -hmm. um, water bottles are a big thing. Yeah. I notice even a lot of the water bottle companies now are advertising how their bottles have less plastic than they used to. So, uh, but but yeah, and that's a great thing. Is, is to use maybe a plant-based plant plastic. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one step if you really need a bottled water. But again, you know, don't buy a case of bottled water when they're only eight inches or eight ounces big. Mm -hmm. It's just kind of a waste. It, it tends to be a waste. Right. And even our bookstore here sells stainless steel water containers and beverage containers. And you and I have our coffee here yeah. and our JCCC mug. So yeah, that is all part of that process yeah. too. And as people offer discounts for this kind of stuff, that's really important as well. So um, the other thing you could do at home is, is to compost, basically taking all of your food and starting a compost pile out back. Mm -hmm. And basically it's pretty simple. You just take some leaves and some grass and sort of cover up the food with it. I, I say it's simple, but you can you can certainly find any kind of information you want to on the web about composting. And, and, and most know. municipalities have a compost class that you can take yeah. if you call your city hall. Yeah, we actually offer one here at Johnson County Community College through our continuing ed. Well, there so, you go, there yeah. you go. And then farmer's markets are great to do yeah. your shopping, and our student farm is kind of along those lines, but yeah. tell we us have, about that. We have a sustainable ag uh, program on campus, so that, that allows us to actually have a, a day in which farm produce is brought to the college, and well, not brought to, because it's so close, or it's less than, I don't know. It's just on the west side of yeah. campus. <laughs> it's less than a mile away. <laughs> So, you know, they bring that too, and, and that's, uh, that's a nice tie-in too with the days that we have the pastry sale. So that, that, that's a really good opportunity for people to get some local food. That's really great. local food. <laughs> <laughs> very local, yeah. very local. Well, so thanks, Michael, for coming in and talking with us about all these wonderful strategies. Is there anything you've left out or you want to add? Well, uh, you know, there's a lot of opportunities for students too. One of the ways um, sustainability can happen is by creating an economic future also for our students. Um, but we also want to have a healthier environment and a socially responsible environment. And in doing that, we've, we've had a lot of great opportunities to help students because there's a lot of jobs when it comes to this um, zero waste process. As we look at it, there's, there's resource management jobs, there's also jobs in just reupholstering, um, rebuilding things. We, we have programs here for you know HVAC, we have programs here for solar technology, we have programs here for all kinds of things. Well, one of the great projects we had in last semester was the interior design program had actually put together a class for reupholstering. And we took three of our old chairs on campus, one the lounge chairs that had really good bones, but they just kind of looked worn. And so they did a feasibility study to see what would be the best way to reupholster these chairs. And in the end, the class learned a great deal about reupholstering, but they also learned about the business case of, you know, does it make sense to actually reupholster? And in the end, yes, it did. Mm -hmm. They were able to reupholster these chairs and find that if we wanted to, it's a great alternative to buy, buying a bunch of brand new chairs. And in doing that, we're probably going to go forward and, and probably reupholster quite a few lounge chairs on campus. But then when they work with clients as interior designers, they can say, you know, your grandmother's chair is still good. Let's just cover it with a different fabric to make it fit into whatever we're trying to do here. And what a great way to, to reuse. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And so that's just a great way for students to learn how this whole process works and how we can get to zero waste. That's perfect. Well, just to close, tell us about the story with your, the HVAC program, because I think we're replacing some air conditioning units that are quite old on campus, and it worked out really well. Yeah. We, we run into these kind of great opportunities sometimes just by chance, and so 
uh, as part of our construction and demolition recycling, we actually um, requested to keep some of the air conditioning and, and heating units coming out of the child care center. And in doing that, we set them aside, and then uh, by chance, the HVAC curriculum had, uh, department had basically come up and seen those, and they said, could we use them? We need those good materials to practice on for our classes. And in doing that, we said, yeah, that, that's the perfect opportunity here to actually reuse these, because we were just going to recycle them. Mm -hmm. And in doing that, uh, we've now given the opportunity to uh, another department to actually have something to practice on. And then when they're done practicing it, they'll go ahead and recycle them for us. That's great. Yeah. What a great outcome for yeah. you. Well, thanks again for coming and being with us today and telling us about the zero waste policy here at Johnson County Community College. Great, thanks. It's been great. Yeah. This is Michael Ray, our Sustainability Project Manager, and I'm Emily Bierman, and this is JCCC Voices. Thanks for tuning in.